investigate his claims, examine the evidence, make your decision. Jesus had made a pretty big entrance in the temple area and was fast becoming popular in Jerusalem. The religious leaders became jealous of his following, but not all of the teachers of the law were opposed to Jesus. Because of the miraculous signs Jesus did in Jerusalem at the Passover celebration, many began to trust in him. But Jesus didn't trust them because he knew all about people. No one needed to tell him about human nature, for he knew what was in each person's heart. Under the cover of darkness, a religious leader called Nicodemus came for a private meeting with Jesus. After his showdown in the temple, Nicodemus thought Jesus was worth a hearing. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark, one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants. Just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible? Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, You are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things. When someone believes and accepts the testimony of Jesus, God himself, the Holy Spirit, comes to live within the believer and transforms them from the inside out. They are born again. The Bible says that anyone who belongs to Christ, that's Jesus, has become a new person. The old life has gone, a new life has begun. I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. Jesus was pointing Nicodemus back to a story in Israel's past. Soon after leaving Egypt, the people began to grumble against Moses and God. Even though God had led them out of slavery and wonderfully provided for them in the desert, they began to moan and groan. God was going to teach them a lesson. He judged them for their sin of rebellion by sending poisonous snakes into their camp. His purpose was to bring about a change of mind and heart. The Israelites quickly became helpless and realised that only God could save them from this punishment. They appealed to Moses. We have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he would take the snakes away from us. God heard their cry and said to Moses, Make a bronze snake and set it on a pole. When anyone who is bitten looks at it, he will live. When an Israelite was bitten, all he had to do was turn and look at the bronze snake on the pole. 
then he would be healed, he would live. If the person did not look at the snake on the pole, they would surely die. Jesus was speaking about the way in which he would die. He would be lifted up on a wooden cross and take the punishment which was due toward us for our rebellion against God. He would draw everyone to himself and save those who would turn and look to him. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. And the judgment is based on these facts. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it, for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. God offers you the gift of his Son, Jesus Christ, who can give you eternal life. Will you accept him or reject him?